Phil Mickelson is a man with many nicknames. He's called Mickelson by some and others call him Lefty. But when Tom Brady, the seven-time Super Bowl winner, called him Babe during the match, this was too much. And it wasn't because of the nickname per se, it was more about the fact that he found out he wasn't the only person Brady reserved that nickname for. To hear more about this and to catch up with shenanigans in the match, keep watching. First off, let's look at the friendship. Mickelson and Brady have a great friendship. Both athletes are at the pinnacle of their respective sports, and they were teamed up for the second edition of the match against Tiger Woods and Peyton Manning. They lost the charity match, but the rapport between them was so good that it ignited a truly close friendship. But Phil may have been under the impression the friendship was more meaningful to Brady than it really turned out to be. While watching an episode of Manning Cast, the six-time major champion found this out the hard way. So, Phil Mickelson is upset with Tom Brady. Manning Cast is an ESPN broadcast with the official name Monday Night Football with Peyton Manning. It broadcasts MNF NFL games with live reactions and running commentary from the quarterback brothers. Julian Edelman was one of the guests on the show during the New York Giants Tampa Bay Buccaneers game last season. Several funny insights about Brady were aired during the telecast, and one of the many tidbits was that Brady refers to many of his teammates as Babe. And this didn't sit well with Brady's golf buddy, Phil Mickelson. He responded on Twitter saying, found out on the Manning cast that TB's a babe guy. The reason this is so disappointing is he called me babe when we were partners in the match and I thought I was the only one. Now to find out he calls everyone babe really crushes my heart. The tweet, made in jest by Mickelson, caused a laugh riot among fans. They loved it. Brady didn't respond to the golfer, but the friendship is truly admirable. But is Mickelson really hurt? Over over the years, there has been a lot of friendly banter between the two, specifically on Twitter. The calf's joke quickly gained notoriety, and the babe comment is bound to do the same. And hopefully, we'll see more. Mickelson is finally active on Twitter again. Whether the fact that Brady calls everybody babe was really a surprise for Mickelson or not is an open question. Ask any of Brady's teammates, and they'll tell you. With our tongue in our cheek, we hope Lefty isn't too upset. The Brady-Mickelson pairing on the match is incredibly entertaining and it would be sad to see that lost. So, how was the match going for Brady and Mickelson? The summer wasn't kind to the pair. They lost the fourth round to Aaron Rodgers and Bryson DeChambeau. The head-to-head -head match play event was 1-3 and 2 by the latter pair at the Reserve Golf Course at Moonlight Basin in Big Sky, Montana. And this was the second time Mickelson and Brady fell off the bus as teammates in this type of match. Peyton Manning and Tiger Woods left them in the dust way back in May 2020. And in case you don't know, the match is a charity golf event that helps raise money for Feeding America and My Brother's Keeper. And even Aaron Rodgers tells Phil Mickelson to shut up. In the fourth version of the match, Phil and Tom take on DeChambeau and Rodgers in an 18-hole round. As we've seen in the past, trash talk is the name of this game. Let's look at a couple of moments that stood out in previous editions of the match. First, there's Tom Brady's golf ball. While Tom Brady warmed up on a practice green, a camera man zoomed in on his golf ball. Turns out it was stamped with the Super Bowl numbers marking all seven of his wins. A subtle flex, maybe. This way, Brady can get his confidence up on every shot, reminding himself of exactly how many rings he has and how little he has to prove to anybody. Of course, Mickelson has no interest in football. There wasn't much trash talk on the practice range. Some small talk, yes, and football inevitably came up. Mickelson said he was soft and in no way wanted to get hit the way Brady and Rodgers do when they step onto the field. DeChambeau was in agreement, and then DeChambeau chips in for birdie. For a while, the first hole was going to go to Brady and Mickelson. The team hit their ball on the left of the green and stared down the barrel of a long birdie putt. The game was in the form of an alternate shot format. Rodgers hit the second shot off DeChambeau's tee, and it landed short of the green. DeChambeau, all nonchalant, knocked it in for a birdie. Mickelson missed his birdie putt, and the Brady-Mickelson pair went one down on the first. Then, Rogers quiets Mickelson. Mickelson is a talker on the course. This is a well-known fact, especially in these kinds of matches, but Rogers already had a strategy in place, even before the match started, to deal with Mickelson and his trash talk. Clearly, a part of that well-thought-out strategy was to simply tell Mickelson to shut up.
caught up. He did so on the 1st and again on the 6th. And then things got chippy early on. The trash talk picked up some on the 2nd and Mickelson gave Rogers a 4-foot putt for a par. We're not in a rush, Mickelson said. In response, Rogers started making fun of Mickelson's belt buckle, intimating it should have been bigger. As Mickelson prepared to tee on the next hole, Rogers interrupted and asked if he was using a tailor-made driver. Mickelson is on the Callaway roster and Rogers continued his heckling, saying he was glad to finally have Mickelson as part of the tailor-made family. Member of the commentary team, Charles Barkley, joined the trash talk and even former President Obama joined the broadcast. Brady mentioned he played plenty of good football in the Obama era. On the green, Mickelson missed an eagle putt and conceded a birdie. Rogers and DeChambeau messed up their putts to concede the hole. Of course, Mickelson took jabs at DeChambeau. Leading up to the match, Mickelson and DeChambeau had been taking subtle jabs at each other. DeChambeau was firing away about Mickelson's age, and Mickelson fired back with comments about the standard of DeChambeau's game. This banter continued on the course when Mickelson drove straight down the fairway with 317 yards of carry. DeChambeau answered with a terrible hook into the trees. Mickelson's comment? National TV, a 51-year-old out driving you. That's not okay. Mickelson also came out on top in the long drive contest on the 6th, a par 5, and again had running trash talk commentary about DeChambeau's game. This time, Brady joined in, taking aim at Bryson. Bryson's the slowest in the group. The only thing slower than him is my 40-yard dash time. Then Gronk calls in. Tight end for the Tampa Bay Buccaneers, Rob Gronkowski, phoned the broadcast from his nephew's baseball game. It was all to encourage Brady. Brady wondered out loud if maybe Gronk was spending too much time at the beach instead of preparing for the season. Also, Rogers sidesteps football questions. When commentators want to know if Rogers was going to be with the Packers this season after his tumultuous offseason, this question was born from rumors that Rogers was unhappy with the Packers. When asking if anyone will be wearing number 12 in Green Bay, Rogers shrugged the question off. I'm just having a good time out here with Tom, he said. I'm trying to talk to him about if he's going to keep playing or not. Barkley joined the conversation, saying he and Rogers went way back and that Rogers should tell him. On national television, Barkley promised to keep it a secret. Then the trash talk takes a dip. Trash talk at the match is much hype by all involved. It promises to start out hard and fast and keep momentum throughout the match. But by the 10th, it had started to take a dip. Folks weren't as woody as they were in the beginning, something that was picked up by spectators. PGA golfer Kevin Kistner offered to commentate and teach the participants how to trash talk, but it wasn't living up to the promises at this point. Then Baker Mayfield stopped by. Joining the broadcast via video, Cleveland Browns quarterback Baker Mayfield joined the broadcast, saying his golf game is not great right now. Member of the commentary team, Larry Fitzgerald, asked Mayfield about getting Odell Beckman Jr. back, and Barkley wanted to know if Mayfield was dressed in a robe. Also, Rodgers gets thumbs-up training. Mickelson is well-known for his thumbs-up to crowds and fans at tournaments. Rodgers took the opportunity to learn from the best on how to properly utilize the gesture, without much success. Mickelson became the thumbs-up teacher and drilled the proper technique into Rodgers, much to the amusement of spectators, who love Mickelson for for this gesture. And finally, Mickelson was not going to be holding back against Rogers. It's late in the match. On the 16th, DeChambeau and Rogers are up too. Mickelson and Brady line up a birdie putt to keep the game alive. Rogers eventually sinks the putt that wins the match. That's a bit of insight into the fun that's had by all, and also the involvement of outside sports giants and even an ex-president in this magnificent charity event. And no, we don't believe there's really any bad blood between Brady and Mickelson.